Thanks a lot everyone for being here. Um, I'm super excited to be here, uh, coming directly from France to be with you. Um, so a quick presentation. Uh, I am uh, Pierre, I've been a developer for, a developer for several, several years. And I am one of the creators of uh, Strapi, which is a, an open source headless CMS, uh, completely based on uh, JavaScript and uh, with a GraphQL support as we are going to see. So my talk is about uh, how to deliver faster with uh, GraphQL and Strapi. So when you have to deliver a new website, uh, whatever you have to do with this website, it can be a blog, it can be a corporate website or anything else, it's a long way uh, from the idea to the user. So at the beginning of the process, you are going to have some ideas, you are going to write the content of your website. Then you are going to design it, then you are going to develop it, and then your user is going to interact with your website. So the question is, where can GraphQL help with this? And it's especially in two uh, sections. So definitely doesn't help with the ideas and with the design, sorry for this, but it definitely helps with the interaction uh, with the user, especially uh, with the payload as we're going to see. But it also helps uh, with uh, front-end development, front development and it can definitely make things easier as we're going to see. And another thing I would like to talk about is the backend part of your project, because uh, building a GraphQL server is way easier than a few years ago, but it can still be complicated, especially if you are building a, a CMS. So I'm going to show you how Strapi can help uh, with this. So let's start with the payload. So um, payload is really important because if you have a big uh, payload in your data when the, between the client and the server, your website is going to become super slow and uh, having a slow website has very strong consequences. All of your users are going to say, uh, this website sucks, it's super slow. And in terms of conversion, it will have very, very big impact. So let's take an example, which is Reddit. Um, so if you, if we take a look um, at this page, so in this subreddit GraphQL, we have a few fields uh, which are displayed. So it's really an example just to illustrate uh, so, so we have, for example, five um, fields that are displayed here. So the score, author, created, and the title, and the number of comments. But uh, if we take a look at the REST API, it has a lot uh, of fields. So more than five are actually used in this page. But uh, the fact is that if you are building a REST API for yourself, it's fine to add your fields. But if you have to make your REST API public, if some other people uh, wants to add new fields in the payload. Is it useful or not to add them? It can quickly become dirty uh, and your REST API is still sending everyone to all of your clients. That can be a big problem. So first, uh, the payload is really heavy in the network. And the other thing is that you are going to um, do two heavy database requests because you are going to select all your, all your fields and you are also going to join to uh, relations of your, of, your, of your data. So that can uh, makes very, very big requests and makes everything slow. So with GraphQL, uh, as you can see here, we can just say, we just want this specific uh, subreddit and then we just want the name and we want uh, the link uh, only with the fields we want. And another thing which is really interesting with GraphQL is that we, could, we, could, we can use aggregations. So for example, uh, on the previous page, we saw that we have a number, which is the uh, score of the, um, of, the, uh, of the link. And this score can be actually the sum of the deer. So deer is the direction of each uh, like. So it's one if the like is positive, it's uh, dash one if the, so less one if the uh, link is negative and the sum of this can give you uh, only the specific value you want. So then you get only the data you want. Uh, so it's less uh, SQL or whatever request in the database and it's also less data in the payload. So we thought that GraphQL can help with the payload but it can also help with front-end development because we have a big payload. Um, so the good thing with REST is that you are going to do less request. Um, I mean, you have all of these fields. Uh, so at first sight, at least, you are going to do less request because you have everything in the same um, payload. But the problem uh, is that if you want to decrease the payload, you are going to 
finish with something like this in our relations. Uh, so it's only the, uh, here it's a link in the subreddit, it's just an example. I just uh, made a book of Reddit. It was a very small Reddit clone. I'm sure Reddit is much more complex than this. But we have the title here. We have the author ID. But as you can see, we have nothing about the author. We don't have uh, the username. We don't have the ID. Uh, we do have the ID, sorry, uh, we, but we have only the ID. So with REST, we are going to do something like this if we want to keep the payload small. We are going to uh, make several requests to get the comments related to this link, to get the author information related to this link. So it's a lot of requests for, at the end, uh, getting the link with all the relations. So on the opposite, if you have a light or payload, then you have to do more requests, which is a vicious circle. Um, so it's really hard to, to get out of this. But GraphQL can be really the right uh, solution for this because you do an only one request, you get everything you need, no more, no less. And now I would like to talk about the backend uh, because if you are building a website, uh, it can be fun to use GraphQL for all of these advantages. But uh, you, if you are building a website, so probably not something like GraphQL, maybe a blog or something like this, you don't want to reinvent all of the uh, CMS part, um, and neither is GraphQL server just to build the blog. So let's see how uh, Strapi can help with this. So Strapi is an open source headless CMS, uh, so it's on GitHub, uh, 20k stars. Um, it's completely based on JavaScript, so both the uh, admin panel, which is on React, and the uh, API, which is on uh, JS. It's entirely customizable, and the good thing with GraphQL about uh, Strapi is that you can visually uh, define your uh, GraphQL schema. Uh, and it's not only about GraphQL, you can use REST uh, depending on what you want. But the good thing about building this visually is that uh, you can easily manage relations. So one too many, many too many, and so on, which can be a pain if you maintain a lot of uh, GraphQL schema files. And the good thing as well is that you have GraphQL out of the box with filter aggregations and you can completely customize, thing, customize it with uh, adding uh, new resolvers, and, uh, et cetera. And the last thing and most important thing I want to show you is working with unpredictable content. When you are building a website, so not a blog in this case, um, you, if you are on the home page of a website and you have a, a tagline, then you have a slider, a slider, and then you have testimonials and so on and so on, you probably don't know what content you are going to get. And at first sight, you can say, okay, GraphQL, I don't know what I'm going to request. I don't know what I'm going to get. So we tried to fix that, and I'm going to show you how um, Strapi can help with this. This is the uh, Strapi admin panel, so everything is open source. Um, you can create a new content type. Uh, so here in this example, we are going to say that we want to create pages on our website. And each, pa each page uh, must have a, a slug, for example, which will be a dash for the home page and so on. Yep. Then um, every page can have a name, so it's a text. And then I'm gonna create some funny things. So if you are front-end developers, you are probably used to components. And we actually introduced the component system into the CMS. So we're going to create a component. Yep, then I have to first say what I did. Okay, so it's going to restart my server because it's actually wrote some files on my computer that I'm going to deploy. So when I deploy, I get all my content structure on my production server. So for example, if you have, um, if you use a, if you have a website and you have to add some uh, metas for the SEO, you are going to uh, have a component which is SEO, um, the default category. We don't really need a category here. Uh, we should an icon. And then uh, each, com each component can have a uh, name. And the title. Uh, no, a value, sorry. I'm gonna show you after a while. We're going to fill all of the things after. I'm gonna save my component. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to my page and I'm gonna add this component 
and I'm going to use uh, an existing component. No, sorry. Uh, yeah, we will add the SEO after all. So I'm going to create a slider, which is, um, yep, excuse me, I've lost myself. Can't find it. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to create this slider component, which is uh, much more powerful. Um, so this is a component, and we are going to add a new field in this component, which is going to be a new component. And this component is a slide, still in the default category. Go. This one, for example. And this is a repeatable component because we don't know how, much, how many slides we are going to have in our slider. So I'm going to save this. And then uh, I'm going to create another component, which can be a paragraph. And this paragraph can have a title and some content with the which text editor. Okay, so I'm gonna check this. I'm gonna have to add some fields to this slide. So each slide uh, must have a link, for example, so a link, which is a short text, and then an image. Uh, here we go. Okay. So I'm going to restart, and then I go in my page, and I create what is called the dynamic zone, uh, which is the content actually on my page. And this is actually the impredictable part. I'm going to, here I'm going to use uh, existing components. So for example, NK, NK, I can use my side slider, and I can use my paragraph. Okay, so now I save to save my uh, contents. And if I go back to my page, I'm gonna create my first page with a slug, which is uh, just slash uh, because it's the home page. So we are going to name the page. And then this is the crazy part. So we are going to add content. So first we're going to add a slider and we're going to add some slide in our slider. Um, so it can be a link to Reddit, for example. And then I'm gonna find the Reddit logo. Yeah, this one. Okay. And that way I can add an image here, which is the Reddit logo, so I can add many slide that I want. So uh, just to show you, let's see, origin.com, I'm gonna use the same image. And then um, lower on my page, I have a paragraph that I want to add, so I'm gonna add a paragraph. In this paragraph, uh, say hello world, and here we can add some data for the content of this paragraph. Here we go. So I saved my content. So I'm going to go to the uh, GraphQL background. You probably know this. OK, so here I'm going to get my pages. And just below, yep. I'm going to get my pages. And for each page, I can get uh, the ID, the slug, and the name. OK. So as you can see, it's completely forbidden because this API is secured by default. We are going back in the admin panel and in roles and permission, we can adjust the security for every function of the API. So in page, I'm gonna make sure that I can request all of my pages. Now, if I go back here, here we go. Now we have our page, which is here. But the most interesting part here is that in content, we don't know what we are going to have. Maybe it will be a slider, maybe, maybe it will be a paragraph. And 
to make sure that we get everything we need, we decided to use the fragments. And this is really the power, the power of GraphQL here because we can get any type of content and GraphQL, thanks to the fragments, has really its flexibility. So, uh, of course, we didn't see anything yet, but if we want to see the slider, and then each slide, we want the link, and of course, we want the image here. And for each image, we want the URL. And then we get everything you need about our slider. And same thing for the paragraph. We get the ID, title, and content. There we go. So as you can see, uh, you can uh, deliver faster with the GraphQL and Swapy. And that was actually the entire talk. Um, so I'm happy to answer any question.